Many people feel hard done by when they get a parking ticket so much, so they challenge the fine. But if that challenge is rejected, most of us don't really take it any further. No, but perhaps we should, because which magazine says the number of parking fines overturned at appeal means it is worth persevering if your initial complaint is turned down? We'll hear this morning motoring journalist Adam Rayner and Nick Lester from London Councils. I'm surprised you've come back, actually, based on the Barney we had earlier this morning <laughs> with the two of you. Um, you have to point out first, Adam, parking tickets, you hate them, we know that, but what about the challenges that people take, taking them to appeal? Absolutely justified. I, I personally would try it on in any case, uh, even when it's uh, probably not justified, but the fact is, it's such an unpleasant thing to get a ticket that if you think there is the remotest shred of a reason why you shouldn't have got that. Um, the ire that arises in your chest is, is quite epic and you want to do something about it. And I'm so happy that these people who actually hand the tickets out, who I personally have awfully antipathetic feelings towards, are actually backed up by a gentleman such as one to my left here. Mm. Uh, uh, Thank uh, heavens they I think, Lester, I mean, it would, given that so many, when they reach the final court of appeal, so to speak, are uncontested by councils, it would make you think that they shouldn't be given out in the first place. Why waste all this time in administrative bureaucracy? Well, I think it's worth remembering in the first place that only 1% of tickets result in an appeal to the adjudicator in the first instance. And yes, a number are uncontested, but quite often that's because the motorist puts forward further evidence when they send their appeal in, and the council will say to itself, well, if only they'd sent us that detail in the first place, we'd never be here. Equally, there are faults on council's side as well, where senior officers will look at the appeals in more detail, and they'll say, we should have cancelled this one earlier, and that's human nature. We do try and make the appeal system as accessible as we can, and I agree with everything that Adam said, that if people feel aggrieved, they ought to challenge, they ought to take their appeal to the adjudicator. Yeah. If they feel that it's a fair cop gov, then let's try and sort it out and close the thing down as quickly as possible. Mm, it often is, Adam, a fair cop gov, isn't it? I mean, you look at the sign, you think, ah, I didn't quite read the bit that says you can't park here in the half hour allotted, but you, ca you can park here the rest of the time. That's uh, one I've been done on. Maybe so, but the, uh, the whole culture seems to be one that uh, our back pocket is under siege by the whole sort of regime of you're a motorist, therefore we're going to try and spank you in every possible direction whether it's yet more money on the petrol, whether it's being skinned for parking for a concert at the O2, or whatever it is. It's um, the pettiness that you're it, objecting it, to, it isn't it? It just drives you mad. I mean, it's, it's expensive enough to, to have a car. It might be a privilege to be a motorist, and there's a lot of responsibilities involved. But the idea that a little tiny piece of grey tarmac that you leave your car on can be so expensive mm. um, is, is a pain. I accept that you do need to have restrictions for uh, places where people can get obstructed. Mm. Can you imagine Heathrow Airport if you could park anywhere? Exactly, <laughs> yes. Yeah. The M4 would be parked up all the way. I, I mean, but there is that issue, isn't there, Nick Lesson? It's not necessarily about the exact letter of the law, where people just feel they've been treated unfairly. It's silly because the regulations weren't clear, a sign was covered up. You yeah. must be aware of this. Uh, you know, I live in central London. They recently brought in a different parking regime where I live, and the signage is just so confusing. Yeah. Part of it's a clear way, part of it's a bus lane. Restrictions apply for two hours here and two hours there. And people are getting tickets within the letter of the law, but they feel they haven't been treated fairly. I think the real problem at the, at the base of it is there are too many cars looking for too, many, too few parking spaces and every time you get a ticket because you've overstayed or you've parked where you shouldn't, there's somebody else who's saying he should have got a ticket because I have a right to park there, particularly in residence zones around people's homes. They're only introduced because there's too much pressure from non-residents coming into the area that residents can't park at all. Well, you say that, but a lot of people feel, as I'm sure you do, Adam, it's just to get more money out of the motorists, make it so confusing, you fox them. Uh, yes, this whole British thing as well about not bothering to, uh, to complain. I, I could kiss the guys at which for bringing it to our attention, the fact that it is <laughs> worth it. Um, the issue of roadside furniture and even the paint on the tarmac not being correct is really the one that, that raises the most fury. Um, I saw a production on the TV, there's that chap who does the consumer thing, going around measuring paint, and right there, actually outside um, the SMMT, was it, or a major uh, organisational building to do with motoring, and the, the actual bays weren't painted up correctly. It's so often the case that, that these things are... Uh, when people get really so, angry... So it's take your camera scan. with you when you park. Yes, it's, 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 it's... the traffic wardens do nowadays. Absolutely. You must end it there. Thank you both very much. Thank you, thank you very much.